Hello, this is uh, Chris Colson of Beverly Beekeepers. Uh, now last time we talked uh, through a video I showed you how to make wax foundation. This time I'm going to show you how to mount the wax foundation into a frame so it can be used in the hive. So if you remember in the last video uh, in August which was attached to the article in Beecraft I showed you how to make this wax foundation uh, which is here and that's for a brood and this foundation is for a super but this is Langstroth's you will be using a national foundation and the idea is oh this is the storage thing that I built for keeping them all square when they are uh, being stored and the idea is that I'm going to show you how to get the foundation into a frame like this with wires running through it so it's supported in the hive itself and of course for uh, extraction of the super it's very important that you have the super wax supported very well otherwise it will break out so you have to wire it. Now of course you all know that these are the frames that we use in hives um, they have the same characteristics no matter what hive you use um, they have a top bar they have a wedge in there side bars and bottom bars and it's exactly the same for the super frames the only thing that differs really is the depth of them and the side bars these are manly side bars which I use but people use other ones the brood frames frequently have Hoffman space bars here which allow uh, the frames to be moved around easily without actually getting seized up with propolis and wax. So from here I will show you how we get the wires in and then how we put the wires into the wax. On the table we've got three sidebars which I'm going to show you how to uh, drill for putting the wire in for embedding into the wax. This is a uh, Hoffman space sidebar but it doesn't matter and here we've got three holes already marked in for the drilling of the hole to put the wax to put the wire through that's going to hold the wax. This one shows the holes having been drilled and grommets inserted into the holes. Now these small brass grommets stop the wire tearing through the wood. Now of course you may think well a one-off that's okay but some of these frames have gone on for a considerable number of years really and either I've renewed the wire or the wire has lasted so it's best to get these sidebars kept in good condition and here we've got a sidebar without the markings on with the grommets in position the important thing to remember is when you insert these little brass grommets that you do it on the right side if you remember when you're Putting frames together, the V of the Hoffman spacing on your left hand side, this V, points forward and on the other side points backwards. Now when you think about it that makes a difference to which side the grommets go on and that's just a, a technicality which you get used to because it's, you don't want to get the grommets on the inside of this one when they should be on the outside. If you lay them down of course on the bench then the grommets are on the both side, same side when you pick them up they are on opposite sides. V shaped forwards, V shaped backwards. So those are the grommets in position. Now these are in fact the grommets that you can use. A long time ago I used to buy them in small packets but then I found a manufacturer, manufacturer who would sell me them by the thousand very cheaply. So I've got quite a lot of these grommets now which will go on for some years. And to put those into position I use two tools or one tool really. I thread them onto a small screwdriver, offer them up to the hole and push them into the hole uh, and they're held in that position. Now one of the things in, in this is when you drill these holes 
it's best to get a drill which is just slightly smaller than the diameter of the barrel of the grommet and that will make sure that the grommet is held into position and won't fall out. If the hole in here is too big then the grommets will drop out and it's just a bit of a, an extra problem. So make the hole slightly smaller. Now, a long time ago I thought when I was drilling these things I thought there must be an easy way of doing this. This is the template that I actually use for marking up the holes on these bars. It's a thin piece of metal with holes drilled in which I measured. But I thought that I could actually drill several bars at once. And so I made this little clamp to put side bars into. And that's a problem because what happens is if you put a, a long drill through there it goes off centre and starts to come out at the side of these bits. It's much too long. So you go back to, you can drill them in ones and twos but you can't drill them in a great stack like that. So that was a, a no-no and a bit of a waste of time but it was an adventure trying to make it. But I still use this metal former for marking out the holes in the side bars to take the grommets which will eventually take the wires. Now I'll just show you how to drill holes and put grommets in. It's a straightforward business. I usually do this before I put the side bars in because it's easier. But here's a template for the holes which I showed you before. Merely put that over the side bar, mark up the holes uh, with a pencil or marker, whatever you like. So those are where the holes are going to be. A small drill which is suitable for the grommets. Now if you do this inside, <laughs> on the table, use a piece of wood, because otherwise you'll look as though you've got woodworm. Just merely run the drill through, Now on the, uh, on the brood frames it's usually best to use three wires uh, because of the size of the wax. On the supers two wires will do. Here we have the grommets threaded onto a small screwdriver and all that I do is push them into position into the holes and job done. There we go, nice and solid. You can tap them in if you like with a small hammer to make them solid or just a bit of brute force and ignorance. So there we've got a side bar, a side bar which I've, you've seen drilled and you've seen the grommets going in. So that's why the wire is going to come out or go in and be stretched across the frame and I'll show you how to do that. But these grommets prevent the wood being split uh, over over the years if you don't put those in the side bars will get ruined and in fact here's a here's a frame which is several years old now which has been through the cleaning process of one type or another and the wires on that are still intact and all they have to be do is retightened and I'll show you how to do that when we get onto the wiring system Right, I'm going to deal with this next part of the operation in three parts um, because they do take a little bit of explaining, although they're actually quite simple. First of all we've got the part here which produces the current that warms the wire that sinks into the wax. Now commercial people who embed wire into wax use exactly the same principle that of heating the wire electrically. Then we have the probes that you use for touching the wire so that it warms up and the wiring board which goes along with both these things uh, which is just an adjunct to making the whole job easier. So I will deal with first of all how you generate this current. All that we need is a battery charger. All this other stuff here is extraneous. It was something I used when I was experimenting. The main thing are these four resistances which I mentioned in the article which are take the heat out of the current when you reduce it. 
If you dead short a battery charger through a piece of wire it will draw terrific current, it will make the wire very hot, red hot in fact, like an electric fire or the old electric fire and the wire will buckle and tend to come out of the wax. So you've got to reduce the current to about 5 or 6 amps and that's exactly what these resistors do. So when this is in operation it's hung on the side of the shed out of the way until I want to use it. I just turn it all on and uh, produce the current that I want. Now there's two things, two ways of heating the wire up. Depends on how complicated you want them, want to make them. These are just two nails with the uh, positive and negative wire attached to them. When you touch them together you will produce, you will connect the current across and you will see the amperage being drawn. Uh, when those are touched on the wire it heats the wire up and you press them into the wax. This little gizmo is a bit more technical. It's a series of nails. That one's live. That one's live. So those connect, the end ones connect along the wire and these dead ones here merely push the wire in. I have a micro switch on which when the current is ready that little diode there lights up. When the wire's connected it goes off. You can wire it so that the light comes on when the wire's connected or the other way around. It doesn't matter, it's up to you. Um, the problem with this I've found over the years is that these nails tend to move a little bit and don't always connect to the wire. So that's why I built the other one. So very occasionally, every few years, I've got to put these on a flat surface and push them in or out and re-glue them so they touch at the same time. So that's a sort of wiring wand. Now, what I'm going to show you is the idea of this wiring board. This is what we're going to use for wiring the frames on. This is a frame. Uh, now the only thing here which is of interest probably is this little collar. Now I've built that some time ago because um, can't get it on there. There we go. <laughs> because when you put the frame on, if you have the collar on, then the holes for the wire are above this surface. And that's easy to wire with. The next part, when you put the current through to melt the wires in, you take this off. Let's just talk about the wire for a minute that we're going to use. There's two types of wire here. There is the iron tinned wire, which is stretchable, and then the stainless steel wire here. Now, I found with the iron wire, which has its uses, that to re-stretch it, it's likely to stretch more, and you're not it's very difficult to keep stretching it to keep it tight whereas a stainless steel wire is much more resilient and you can go on crimping it and I'll show you that in a minute which keeps it tight so what I'm going to do is wire this frame up with stainless steel wire and show you how it's done right I'm just going to wire up this frame I've put the nails in already to save time this is stainless steel wire, uh, which is quite stiff and uh, bouncy, so the problem is it tends to come off the spool a little bit. But I'm threading this through the various uh, holes I've made with grommets in. Um, can have reasonable eyesight for this. Now this wire if it's put in correctly, it should last for a long time. Um, it's stainless steel wire, it's supposed to be stainless steel wire, although it's a little bit rusty. Um, I haven't got the end of this wire quite, it's got a bit of a crimp in it. Try not to um, okay, so this is the last hole here. And you can see the importance now of um,
of having these grommets in position already. So the wire, oh it's sprung back, <laughs> never mind. Another problem with stainless steel wire. So the wire comes out there. What I'm going to do, I'm actually doing this back to front now, so it's more difficult. I usually am at that side. So what I'll do is tie the wire off here onto this nail, like that, and a small blow of a hammer, which is why I have this collar on, and that wire's held now into position. I'll tidy it up later. Now we stretch this wire. Well, we don't. We can't stretch because it's stainless steel. It's very hard, and tie it onto the second nail here, like that. Bring it back. Tie it onto this last nail on this side. And draw it back through here. Now I've actually, curiously enough, and I'm not sure why, put an extra nail in there. Now these nails are half centimetre nails. Uh, there's no point in banging uh, two centimetres, these are one centimetre nails. Two centimetre nails that you use for frames are just too much like hard work to get in and out if you ever want to change the wiring. Now, if you notice, this nail here is not on this flat surface because that can alter the spacing. And likewise, I'll show you in a second, this nail at this end is on the edge of the the chamfer for the um, uh, of the Hoffman frame. So you don't put it on the front because that damages the point. Now what we need to do now is tighten up these wires by crimping because you can't stretch this stainless steel wire, you can stretch the tinned wire but as I say that's difficult to retighten. This is a crimper and all it is is a series of two wheels with have got tooth on, te teeth on them. So this is a bit of a craft this, you get, get the wire and you run it down and that's now tightened it. See it's tolerably slack there, wire, and you can hear it tuning itself. Again, so those wires are now tight and ready to have the wax attached to them. Now we've come to the part where we wire the foundation into the frame. Uh, first of all, I take this collar off, and it becomes obvious why that's so. So I'll take the collar off here uh, and put the wax into position on the wiring board. Now this is the frame into which the wax is going. The main thing is to get the wax so that it's into where the wedge goes at the top here. Now as I've said before this wax is slightly smaller than commercial wax in dimensions so I don't have to put it through this bottom bar here, which can be a bit of a pain. So there we are. Now the yoke having the yoke having been taken away means I can press the wax down onto the uh, the frame wires down onto the wax. So all that's needed now is for me to use these electrical probes and slowly put the wax into position. Okay, shall I do that now? Let's see. There we are, it's melted in, and I hope the ammeter down below me is showing about five and a half, six amps. If I dead shorted this, it would show more, show about eight, but of course the wire has resistance, so it shows it draws less of a current. Now one of the things you should just keep your eye on is the probes because they get a lot of wax on them 
and sometimes it may not make, make contact so in fact you have a little piece of sandpaper which you can rub them on occasionally just to make sure that they do make contact. Now on these two little probes I actually do have a little LED or light between the two, the red thing, which shows me when I switch them on that I have got a current going because it's a real pain <laughs> if you go through all this process and you stand here trying to push the wires in and you've got no current flowing. So there's three wires embedded into the wax. The other thing that's worth mentioning is that of course if this current is too high more than say six or seven amps you will go straight through the wax very quickly and cut the wax into sections. Now the last part of this is putting the wedge in at the top which holds the um, wax in place you're all familiar with this wedge. Sometimes I have to put this wedge in sideways because the wax is thick and um, and the wedge stands up too much but I think that's going to be okay. So the wedge is in place there. These are um, inch and a half nails, oh sorry two centimetre nails so it, it held them into position easily. So that's the wax held in the frame with a wedge and the wires. And that should be supported. Oh, there's a nail gone into it there. Oh no, it's not, it's a piece of rubbish. So that should hold in that position for a long time. Slight crack there. I think this might be the wax, this sheet might be the one I made last time, which I got a crack in. But there's a small crack there too low a temperature when I cast it but the bees will equally or easily build over that. So that's how you wire wax into frames. Uh, previous video was how you made the foundation for them. The bees are very happy with this type of foundation. I think because it's got a bit of honey and propolis in it and they cover it very quickly. Uh, we've just uh, wired and put wax foundation into uh, a brood frame, this actually happens to be Langstroth, and three wires went in. They hold the wire, they hold the wax quite okay. In fact, you can centrifuge it if you want to. In the brood, in the super frame, there's two wires which are closely spaced compared to the, the brood. So in the super frame, the wires are much closer, and this is because. We extract honey from the super frames and there is quite large forces produced by the extractor. Uh, I illustrated that with a graph on the August article and you can see that the number of G's is tremendous when you start spinning these frames. So it's always good to have these wires closer together in the brood frame, in the uh, super, fra super frame than the brood frame. Okay well that's the end of the uh, the video for today. Uh, we've made two videos now, one about making your own wax foundation and this one about how you put it into a frame, how to wire it and actually embed the wires into the wax. It's a craft and it's one of those things that uh, once you start doing it you enjoy doing it. So thanks very much for watching this video uh, and to Bill behind the camera who's been doing all the work but I've just been stood here talking. So happy beekeeping to you all.